Hi, I'm Dan Hernandez, and I'd like to welcome you to a very special episode of Sport Fishing. Join us as we visit the High Sierras. We'll drop our lines in a high mountain lakes of the Tioga Pass, where the air is thin and the fish aren't thin. We'll show you a delicious Cajun trout recipe that's a breeze to make at home. Ever hear the Sierra sandwich? No, it's not a high mountain lunch. It's just one of the valuable tips for you this week to make your trout fishing more successful. So stay tuned to this week's episode of Sport Fishing. Sport Fishing with Dan Hernandez is brought to you by Sport Chalet and by Berkeley Trilane, super strong fishing line. Welcome back. Let me introduce who we're going to be fishing with today. This is John and his fiance, Candy. Not your girlfriend, your fiance. Right? Fiance. <laughs> fiance. And John's going to be explaining what we're going to be doing today. We're going to um, fish up on Tioga Pass, about 10,500 feet, uh, a lake called Ellery Lake. We've understood that there's some good-sized fish in here lately, so we're going to be bait fishing using uh, the power baits, the cheeses, uh, Sierra sandwiches, the salmon eggs with the eggs. I think that's what Dan's got on his line right now. Yeah. But, uh, just basically bait fish and try a few different techniques as far as leaving the bait set, bringing it in slowly. That's about it. Yeah, let me show the rig that I brought, and you tell me if this is the right rig, but I brought an ultralight Fenwick rod, and I have a small Daiwa reel on here, a UL7, and then I have four pound test Berkeley line. That's basically what you want, and then a two or a three pound leader. Okay. Three Why don't you explain the rig that you put on here for us? Um, right now we have the, the basic sliding weight. It's a sliding lead weight, your swivel, and then you go three to four feet of leader to a small, like a 16 treble hook. Put two or three eggs on, cover the shank with a piece of power bait, and that'll get your eggs to float up off the bottom. Yeah, this is called the Sierra Sandwich? Sierra Sandwich, yes. Okay. And if any of you ever come up to the June uh, Lake area, you might like to know that John, his family for over 30-some years now, has owned Ernie's Bait and Tackle up there. So if you need any information or if you don't have the right equipment or you need that bait, you can stop there at June Lake Village, go to Ernie's, pick up your tackle and stuff, and then come on up here and fish. Now, we have this all ready to go. I know one of the things you, you pointed out earlier was to go ahead and put some power strike on there. Yeah, strike is a very effective scent that we use just about every time that we go fishing. We put it on everything from worms to even your lures. A lot of guys will put it on their hands before they go fishing to get rid of uh, the human odor. Okay, well, I think I'm ready to go fish. I'd like to thank you, John, for bringing us Certainly. out. Thanks, Candy, for coming with us. Let's see if we can get us some fish. I know Candy's gonna probably catch the first one, so. Let's take a moment to visit the tackle box to go over the various types of baits you can use for trout fishing. The tackle box, tips and information to help every angler improve their chances on the water. This week, the tackle box is brought to you by the San Diego Sport Fishing Council. Okay, we're gonna go over two different ways you can fish for trout up in the high Sierras, but keep in mind these same techniques, gear and everything will work here locally in Southern California. Now I'm going to start off with a Fenwick rod. This is an ultralight rod. I'm going to fish it with four pound test line on my Daiwa reel. This is a Daiwa UL7. And the rod is a golden wing. It's an ultralight rod, like I said. And what you want to do is just a real simple rig. You can go with a sliding sinker like this or a bobber with a small swivel, two pound test Berkeley line for a liter. And then we have a small hook here. This is a size 14 uh, Mustad hook, trout hook. Now you have a selection of baits you can use. You can go with straight with the, the salmon eggs 
or go with the power bait straight or the nuggets. The nuggets the same as the power bait, it's just already formulated for you, shaped for you, a little bit easier to handle. Now you can use them together too, what we call a CR sandwich. Gives you a little option there. And then what I always like to use is a Berkeley strike, just to give my bait a little bit extra scent to attract the fish. Now the other way we can go is to fish with the lures. The fish get active, this is the way we want to go. Now this is a Phoebe, this is one of the lures that I've used for a long time since I was a youngster. And what I like to do whenever I go to the store and get my lures, I like to buy them in a family. And what I mean by family is, this is a lure I like, a Phoebe, and I'll get maybe four or five different sizes of it and like three different colors of it. So I'm well prepared while I'm on the water. It doesn't matter if the fish want a gold one day or a silver the next day or a rainbow the next day, I'm ready, I have it all. Another lure that's worked great for me over the years, especially up in the high Sierras, is the Castmaster. This is a great little lure. You want to move up in rod class to a little bit stiffer rod and move up in your line class too. I'd use like six pound Berkeley XL, would work great with this. Now if you're new to this type of fishing and you're not quite sure what lures to get and you get intimidated walking into a tackle shop, try something like this. This is from Acme. It shows you a bunch of their different lures, different colors, different sizes. And once you start fishing with these, catch a few fish, then you can pick out which one will be your favorite lure. Well, let's get back on the water so we can get us some trout. Hey, John, I just had a little strike here. What exactly is going on? I mean, they, they don't swallow it? Um, generally, the trout in the, eastern, in the eastern Sierras will come through and they will uh, bump the bait with their head or their tail first. They'll head come or tail? Head or tail. See if, they're, if it's floating freely or if the bait's connected to anything. Oh. They'll come back after that and actually swallow the bait. That's the, strike. <laughs> That's the strike you just got right there. So the first little thing I felt, that was just basically the head or the tail. Yeah, hitting that's the, bait. the fish checking out your bait to see if it's connected. And that's why we have the sliding rigs? That's exactly why I use the sliding weight. Okay. Your bait will float fr freely through the, through the line. Well, it doesn't feel like a big fish, but... Generally, the fish in these high Sierra lakes are about 8 to, four, eight to 12, 14 inches. Still feels nice. They're such beautiful fish. Do you have any idea how often these lakes get stocked? Once a week. Once a week. They once get a week. Mm -hmm. Just about everything in the eastern side of the Sierras gets it once a week. Do you have any idea how many lakes there are up here? I mean, could a guy come up here and fish a different lake every day of the month and not see them all? Yeah, no doubt. There's. Th four lakes right here within a half a mile. Yeah, I think this guy's about played out. Let's slide him up here. It's a lot nicer since that sun's come out. Just a little warmer, huh? <laughs> Take the jackets off. Come on, baby. Come I think on. it's my turn now. Oh. <laughs> He's not as played out as I thought he was. There we go. God dang. Okay, I'm gonna just let this fish go. He's in good shape. Let him revive a little bit. And all you wanna do is just kinda move him a little bit, get the air going through their gills and the water. And once he's ready to go, he'll just shoot out. Here we go. You ready? You ready, Trout? There He's he goes. Ready. Hooked and release. Catch him when he gets a little bit bigger. Well, stay tuned and we'll be right back with a lot more action from the high Sierra. All right. John's gonna go ahead and tie me up a new uh, leader. We already got connected to the swivel and we're just gonna tie on the hook. Now this is very simple, real basic. It might be a little basic for those of you that fish a lot, but for a brand new angler or guy who's never tried freshwater trout fishing, this is a good thing to watch. Why don't you go ahead and explain this it? This is a, uh, a tool we use at Ernie's quite a bit. It's called a tie right. It's actually just a, a hook holder. It's got a little nipple on the end. Slide your hook in there and it holds it. We're just gonna do the clinch knot, run your line through, 
okay? You would wrap your line around seven or eight times if you didn't have this tool, but with the tie right, all you end up doing is spinning it. Yeah, it makes it a lot safer, too. Yeah. Now we have our seven or eight twists in there. We go back through the loop at the bottom and back through the loop we just made. And just cinch it down. Cinch it down tight, cut off your end. And that's, it's nice to have a tool like that because when you cinch down, you never want to hold onto the hook. No. Because I've seen so many hooks go into hands and right. fingers and that's stuff. That's the time where it's going to go right in your skin. Right. So this is a lot safer. Yeah. And no matter where you're fishing, if it's up here in the high Sierras or down in Southern California or one of the San Diego lakes for trout, this is the same rig that you'd want to use. Why don't we go over the whole rig here? We got the hook there on the leader. We have the swivel. Like a number 10 or a 12 swivel. And then your sliding lead weight. And we're using, like you said, what we want to do is let the sinker actually go all the way to the bottom and our um, power bait to float up. The bait will float up like this. This is the weight we're talking about when the fish come and they bump the bait. They'll bump it, it'll move it around, your line will float freely, your weight sits on the bottom. And the fish never The fill fish it. will come back, they don't know it's connected, see. Okay. This is great. All right, candy. And it's only two pound test leader, right? Correct, two pound trialing. Oh, it is, that's a nice fish. This is um, Ellery Lake on Toga Pass. We're at about 10,500 feet. Uh, it's actually a man-made reservoir that was, that was built many, many years ago uh, by DWP. The Vining Creek flows out of here and ends up in Mono Lake that you've all heard so much about. Um, the area that we're fishing is kind of in a little cove here. We've got a little shelf and then it's going to drop off about 20 feet. About 10 feet out here you can actually see the color change in the water. It's the type of thing you want to look for when you're fishing because fish are going to congregate in here. The, the food's going to flow through. The fish will come in. As you can see, we've had pretty good luck so far this morning. So when you're fishing an area, you want to look at the hillside, and that'll tell you what it's like under the water. If you look at this, we've got a giant rock outcropping here straight down. The water is very deep right there, and then we have the shelf. So the fish are going to wait right on the other side of that shelf for the food. Well, John again bit again. This time he's actually biting it. Maybe he'll come back now. You sure about this slapping it with their head stuff, huh? It's generally what they do. Okay. Don't go away. We'll return in a moment. The Galley. Recipes and tips for preparing your fish at home. This week, the Galley is brought to you by Acme Lures. I'd like to introduce you to Richard Sanchez, longtime friend of mine, fellow Montebello oiler. We go back 19 years. And he's a vice president and general manager here at Golf and Bar and Grill in beautiful Southgate. And what are you going to be performing for us? We're going to do a Cajun rainbow trout. So let's get to the kitchen. All right. OK, in preparing the Idaho rainbow trout, first we'll mix together the Cajun spices. Um, our Cajun spice consists of black pepper. We use white pepper cayenne pepper, and we've got uh, garlic, and, granulated garlic and onion. Lots of cayenne pepper. I love my Cajun spicy, so I put lots of cayenne pepper, black, white pepper, and I also love garlic, so a lot of the granulated garlic. Mix it together real good. Real nice red color and spicy. What we do is we'll take the trout, first dip it in our Cajun sauce. It's a mixture of Louisiana hot sauce, uh, cayenne pepper, vegetable oil, and then the secret ingredient to a good Cajun sauce is the Italian dressing. So follow me to the grill. You take the trout, dip it in the Cajun sauce, then over to the Cajun seasoning, and then on the grill. 
It's best to cook this on a flat grill or in a skillet so you can get the nice blackened color. And today we'll be preparing this one with uh, rice pilaf and a baked potato. And that is a beautiful piece of trout. Let's eat. Okay, Dan, there you are. Rainbow trout. And this is rainbow trout Cajun style. Cajun style. And this is something people aren't real used to seeing, I guess, rainbow trout Cajun style. You know, but our Cajun spice has gotten so popular and we put it on everything. You've got your Cajun steak, prime rib, uh, other, there's other game fishes we cook. It's just delicious, it goes with everything. Well, for those of you who've never been here to the Gotham Bar and Grill in beautiful South Cape, I suggest you come down and try one of these dishes, and I'm going to go ahead and try this, Rich. Oh, that's delicious. Thank you. Thank I you very much. I'm going to take it to the table. Okay, Dad. Bye now. All right, John. Dad, you won't believe it. John's got one. <laughs> got one on my own rod, even. On his own rod. Oh, that's coming. That's this is coming. My, my Berkeley power pole. <laughs> Oh, there's a little jumper, too. Yes. Right. Let me see if I can get the hook out of it real quick. Yeah, we got it there. Here's a fish John just caught. It's in good shape, so we're going to go ahead and let it go. Get down here in the water. It's gone. <laughs> <laughs> He was in a hurry to get back to that water. I was trying to do it a little bit more delicately, but sorry about that. All right, John, congratulations. Thank you, Dan. That's a great fish. Fishtails is brought to you by Checkpoint, hook and knife sharpeners. This week's Fishtails comes to us from Tyson Losek of San Clemente, California. Tyson was aboard the real fun out of Dana Point Wharf when he landed this yellowtail. It weighed in at over five pounds. That's one of the great things about Southern California fishing. A half day boat to the local cow beds and you can land a fish like this. Congratulations, Tyson. For being our fishtail this week, Tyson will receive a free copy of my book, Saltwater Fishing Adventures. Remember, every fishtail we use on the air will receive a free book. So, send your fishtails, photos or videos, and any questions or comments to Sport Fishing, P.O. Box 90, Montebello, California, 90640. One of the keys of this type of fishing is just being patient. Fish are coming up and they're really slapping the bait. They're slapping the bait to make sure that it's free floating and then they're coming back and biting it. A couple of the fish that we got earlier, the fish just slammed it with their tail, turned right around, picked it up, and ran with it. And it was real easy to set the hook on them. Now it's getting a little bit later in the morning. It's coming up about 10 a.m. now. And the fish are getting a little bit more shy. They're, they're coming up and they're bumping it with their head or their tail, like John said. And then they're taking a while to come back and bite it. They're not just bumping it and, and then biting it right after that. Uh, one of the fish that, the last fish we got, took about two minutes after he actually first hit the line to actually come back and bite the bait and take off with it. So you just have to be patient, put the rod back down, don't let the fish know that you're there, and then once they do come back and hit it real hard, then go ahead and set the hook. And remember, this is freshwater fishing. You don't want to set the hook real hard, just nice and gentle. Oh, that's a little bit nicer fish. That's bigger than the ones I've been catching. You want a net or you can just go get it with your hand? It's pulling some line off there. And it's only two pound test leader, right? Correct, two pound trailing. There you go. All right. That's all right, we can eat this one. Well, congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the wet fish handshake. 
One of the things to think about when you're out fishing is uh, recycling and trash pickup. In the last 15 minutes, this is just stuff that we found here on the beach. Old line that somebody, you know, they brought it here on their spool, got tangled on them, they just cut it off and left it sitting on the beach. As uh, more and more people start fishing, you're going to find more of this. It's going to take more and more people to help clean it back up, protect your fishing resources areas. It's a good idea. The tip of the week is brought to you by Acme Lures. This is John, and he'll be giving us this week's tip of the week. For fishing up in the Eastern Sierras, you want to make sure you use a light line, like a Berkeley four pound. Use a two pound leader, okay? The reason behind this is because the water is clear and cold. The fish can see the heavier weight material. They're also small, so it's going to give you more of a chance to play the fish and have fun with it. Also, be patient. The fish will come and they'll strike your Berkeley power bait once, either with the head or the tail like we talked about before, and then they will come back and actually take it in their mouth. This is when you want to set the hook. That's it for the tip of the week. Be sure to join us next week as we take the Monte Carlo out of 22nd Street Landing in San Pedro and get into some great half day fishing at the Horseshoe Cow. I'd like to thank John, uh, the people at the Sierra Inn and Boulder Lodge, and really all the little businesses over there in the June Lake Loop that are so nice to us on our visit here. But especially John for taking us out, showing us some fishing, and his fiance Candy who came out with us and we got some nice fish. Thanks again. Thank you. Hope to get back here real soon. I hope you do too. Well, I'm Dan Hernandez, hoping you enjoyed this week's episode of Sport Fishing, and that you join us next week when we go looking for more of the best in sport fishing. like to purchase a copy of today's episode of Sport Fishing, send $15 plus $2 shipping and handling along with today's date to Sport Fishing, P.O. Box 90, Montebello, California, 90640.